live from New Braunfels. It's Saturday night. I'm sorry to share with y'all that with the pandemic-related travel complications, uh, Chevy Chase and Will Farrell couldn't be with us tonight, so <laughs> you're going to have to settle for me. My name's David Yates. I'm on, here on staff at Texas Wildlife Association, and welcome to our live broad stream uh, of our, our Wildlife 2020, our, our convention this year, from our brand new headquarters. You know, convention is something that we look forward to every year, and I know you do as well. Uh, while we can't have it in person, we are excited to be able to host something uh, virtually, and, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, what we've shared throughout the week, and, and thanks for joining us tonight for, for our first ever uh, live broadcast. Uh, you know, this is a big year. It's our 35th anniversary, and we, we wouldn't be here without the vision of our founders and the support of our leaders, uh, members, landowners, staff, and donors across this great state. You know, over the last 35 years, we've been able to earn the trust and respect of many great friends and supporters across this state. And tonight, joining us by video is a very special friend with a special message. Hi, this is Governor Greg Abbott. I want to say congratulations to the Texas Wildlife Association on 35 years of advocacy for wildlife, property rights, and natural resource conservation. Your tireless efforts over the years and decades of service have secured an even brighter future for the great state of Texas. As our state continues to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, I, I know that this year's convention might look a little different, but no matter the challenges that we face as a state, I know that by coming together, we will overcome this pandemic and keep Texas the greatest state in America. And this wouldn't be possible without you all and the leading voices in our state for landowners, hunters, and wildlife. Your work on behalf of our great state has made such a tremendous impact and I look forward to working alongside you in the years to come. So congratulations again on 35 years of excellence. May God bless you in your endeavors and may God forever bless the great state of Texas. Thank you, Governor. We appreciate those kind words, and, and thank you for your leadership in these extraordinary times. There's no easy decisions out there, and we, we really appreciate you and your team and the tireless efforts that have been put in over, over the last several months. So thank you very much. You know, a transition from a traditional convention to an online broadcast has been a terrific opportunity for us to reflect on the, the path, where we've been, and, and where we're headed. A little later in this evening's broadcast, we're going to hear a message from our board president, Tom Vandeveer, a little bit of reflection on our past. We're also going to take you on a tour of our new facility that in a lot of ways reflects the future of this organization. We look forward to hosting you all in person here as soon as possible. But in the meantime, we want to give you a sneak peek of what we're up to around here. And we're also going to be joining some members around the state that are tuned in, just like all of you, uh, to to watch our broadcast and, and tune in and support the auction and, and our virtual convention this year. But first, uh, we're going to go over to uh, the maestro of all things convention, uh, the one and only and very fashionable David Brimager. Thank you, David. Uh, thanks to all the members for coming out and supporting us at this first ever virtual convention for TWA. I know it's a little different for all of you, especially for myself. So we welcome you. We thank you for all your support. and. We just want to thank all of our continued partners who have stood with us along the way during these very unique times. Our platinum sponsor, longtime platinum sponsor, uh, Capital Farm Credit. Our gold sponsor, Crockett National Bank. Our silver sponsors that include HEB's Tournament of Champions, Niall Maxwell's Family of Dealerships, Triangle Reproductions of San Antonio, Silver Eagle Distributors and Silver Eagle Beverages, Hall & Hall Real Estate, South Texas Outfitters, and Lee Hoffpower Auto and Outdoor Stores. We also want to thank all of our bronze sponsors, Yeti, Pumpco Pipeline Constructors, Dolnick Ranch Sales, Dilly Feed and Grain, Bushland Camo, Land.com, Texas Capital Bank, and Republic Ranches. Thank you and thank everyone for all their continued support with Wildlife 2020. David? 
Thanks, DB. You know, convention isn't possible without these sponsors, so you, you can find a list of them on our website. Please uh, give them your business, support them in return for supporting us. Uh, that goes a long way, so thank you very much for that. You know, we have some members tuning in from all, all over the state. Uh, we're going to check in with a few of them now. Uh, let's start out in far west Texas with uh, the newly astute Dr. Lewis Harvison at Borderlands Research Institute. Doc? Hey, David. Hey, TWA. It's so good to see you. Welcome to Alpine and Casa de Harvison. Uh, happy birthday, TWA. 35 years is such a significant milestone. My family and I are enjoying some adult beverages and are so excited about tonight's online activities. And to me, TWA convention is like a family reunion. Whether we're at JW Marriott or connecting on the interweb, we truly enjoy our time with our friends. And this organization is just incredible. From hunting heritage to advocacy to conservation legacy, TWA does so much for all Texans. And as a wildlife biologist and researcher, one of my favorite things to do is sharing information with landowners so that they could be the best stewards that they can. TWA has been a leader in promoting adult education through seminars, landowner workshops, and field days since they started 35 years ago. For me, it was 15 years ago when my family and I first attended the convention, and after witnessing the quality and variety of adult programs, I was hooked. I knew right then and there that I was gonna be an active partner through our institute and as a volunteer. And what a time I've had so far. I, I love my time with TWA and our friends. When you have time, take a look at what TWA offers. There is something for everyone at TWA, but don't do that now. Tonight, we want you singularly focused on our auction so that TWA can continue hosting the adult education events that, that are signature to it. We have a great lineup of hunts, trips, gears, jewelry, and much, much more. And tonight's about raising money for an organization that we all love, an organization that works every day at the state capitol to help protect your property rights, an organization that is focused on keeping Texas private lands wild so that we can all benefit from the wildlife, the clean air, and the cool water, and an organization that helps the landowners be better stewards. Before I send you back to TWA World Headquarters, or the David and David Show, as I call it, I'd like to propose a virtual toast. Here's to all the TWA staff and volunteers that have made working, that have been working relentlessly to make this virtual comp convention a success. Cheers to all of you. Hey, salute, Doc. Thank you very much for those kind words, and I echo that. Staff's been doing a terrific job, as well as our uh, convention-related volunteers. So, thank you. Now let's uh, let's jump over to the Concho River Valley uh, and join Greg Simons, our TWA Foundation president, uh, in his home there in San Angelo. Hey, David. Uh, let me just first say thank you to to you and your entire staff for doing a remarkable job of pulling this this online convention together. It took uh, weeks and weeks of preparation. If you look at the all the interviews y'all have done this week, uh, the seminars, the education pieces, you know, job well done. Uh, I occasionally have folks that ask me, what is it about the Texas Wildlife Association that motivates you to give your time, your money, and your resources to this organization? I could point towards a number of different things to answer that kind of question, but we distill it all out. Really, um, one of the things that's very near and dear to me is the work that we do to promote and defend our hunting heritage. Uh, you know, we when you consider uh, the remarkable Texas Youth Hunting Program, when you consider the advocacy work that goes on in Austin, and even in classrooms with some of our education programs, when you consider the fact that for over a hundred years, it's been hunters who have been the, the chief financiers for terrestrial wildlife conservation in this country. Now, those are things that are very near and dear to me and they are to a lot of other so, Speaking of, uh, of hunters, we've got a house full of them here tonight with some friends that are here to help us celebrate this occasion. Uh, several different leaders of our local chapter of Safari Club International that's been supporting the Texas Youth Hunting Program for the last six years now. So I need to hop off, but before I do, I just want to encourage everybody to help bid these auction items up tonight so that uh, Texas Wildlife Association can uh, strongly deploy the important work that we do. Have a good evening. Thanks, Greg, you too. I, I know y'all will. 
uh, you know, you're a consummate leader by example, and I can't, I can't thank you enough for all of your years of service and, and support uh, for this organization that you continue as the president of our foundation. So thank you. Next, let's jump over to Williamson County and join our executive committee member, Niall Maxwell, uh, in his home there in Georgetown. Niall? Thank you, David, and welcome everyone to the virtual 35th anniversary of, uh, of TWA. Uh, I'm here with a cast of thousands, but you just can't see them right now. We're, <laughs> we're, we're partying and having a, having a good time. I would like to start by saying, you know, th this has been a rousing success already, this, this virtual convention, but it couldn't have been done without the leadership of our president, Tom Vanderveer. Tom, I know you're listening tonight, and, and uh, you know, I know it wasn't the presidency that you thought it was going to be, but, uh, you know, these times aren't what anyone expected to be, but you've done such a fabulous job leading us. Sarah, you and John and Lewis, uh, supporting the, the officers, you guys have pulled together and made this a very strong year in spite of everything that, that we've been through. You know, my family and I wish that we were down at the JW just getting out of the pool and getting ready for the, uh, for the big banquet and the auction tonight, but, you know, heck, we're going to do everything we can to support TWA tonight. The auction, I want to put a plug in for the auction. Uh, and I also want to put a plug in for, I think we've got a lot of people here that are tuning in tonight that maybe not necessarily have even been to one of our conventions. So for all those folks, I hope you're out there. This is truly an amazing organization that pulled this off. We're going to raise the money we need to with all of your help. Please consider coming and joining us next year when, when we can all uh, be together and enjoy the JW like, like we have in, in so many years past. You know, I was asked to say something about what TWA means to the Maxwell family and, and, and our businesses and, and our ranches. I want to single one thing out, one program out. This will be our 12th year this October, 12th straight year of, ho of hosting a Texas a youth hunt. And it's been eye-opening. Eye it's been awakening to my ranch staff and us, all the wonderful stories and, and the folks uh, coming and, and hunting with us for the first time, killing their, harvesting their first uh, bucks or their first does, and, and all the wonderful families we've, we've met. That's what expanding our mission is all about. And, and, and I couldn't be more proud to represent TYHP every year in, in our in our hunt at the High Lonesome. So anyway, I'm going to turn it back over to the David and David Show. Please support the auction tonight. I think we've got a, 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 a more ground to cover. I know that uh, David Bremager has been off after me the last several hours to uh, to uh, bid on that beautiful that beautiful stylish. No, 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 that's an ugly jacket, David. It really is an ugly jacket, but, but we'll raise the money. Back to you, David. Thank you, and be safe, everyone. <laughs> Niall, thank you so much. You know, you, you walk the walk uh, as a supporter and, and, and volunteer for this organization. Programs like the Texas Youth Hunting Program would not be possible without your support, landowners like yourself, and opening up those gates and, and letting those young hunters in. So thank you very much for that. We're going to make one more final stop in TWA's hometown of San Antonio with a homegrown TWA, -er, uh, our current vice president, Sarah Biedenhorn. Sarah, you there? We're working on it. Hey, David. Hey. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're getting hello, there. Hello to everyone. I'm sure sad that I'm not there at the JW Marriott with all of you, but um, big thanks to the staff and to many, many volunteers that put this great online event together. So I've been thinking recently a lot about what TWA means to me. And uh, I think the easiest way to tell that story is by telling my TWA testimony. So I am fortunate enough to have really grown up in the organization. My dad has been a member for many years and my parents took me to conventions most summers. And while I did spend plenty of time in the pool at, back at the Hill Country Hyatt, uh, they also encouraged me to attend the educational seminars and to uh, really participate in the event. And so I think that's where my interest in T TWA really started. And um, from there, I had the opportunity to go to a South Texas Buckskin Brigade camp and meet other kids that uh, were very interested in, in wildlife and habitat management and network with a number of volunteers that dedicated much of their time to teaching people like me more about, about wildlife. 
Um, it was that point in my life that I started to realize how few of my peers really understood what wildlife conservation meant and um, the connection between a private landowner and wildlife conservation as a whole. And so I think that's when TWA's mission really became important to me personally. And um, when you know, I decided to really start getting engaged in this incredible organization. So that's why I support TWA. That's what it means to me. I just want to thank everybody for your continued support and um, keep bidding. And I look forward to seeing everybody in person, hopefully next summer. So back to you, David. Thanks, Sarah. You know, you embody and typify what TWA is and, and what we're in pursuit of. So Thank you so much for being involved, and, and we're so fortunate to have you around the leadership table. You know, as most of you know, one of the main events of our convention is Saturday night and, and the auction. Uh, you know, that, that auction puts, uh, you know, to quote our past president, J. David Anderson, that puts gas in the tank of TWA. That's how we keep the lights on and keep in pursuit of the mission on behalf of all of you, our, our members and hunters and landowners of the state of Texas. So. We're going to go back over to David Brimager for a quick update on the auction, uh, so stay tuned. Thank you, David. As you can see on my screen and probably on your screen as well, if you've been keeping an eye on all the great auction items tonight, there's a plethora of items out there for you, and we've got some really unique hunch trips and auction items for y'all to bid at. Some of the ones that I want to point out in particular, I've got a couple for you this evening, but uh, first off, lot number two, is the Petty Ranch Trophy Whitetail Deer Hunt, a, a three-day fully guided hunt down in Zavala County. You're not going to find a better whitetail hunt down there on a true great ranch from the Petty family that's been donating this for a very long time. So check out lot number two tonight. Lot number five is our Casa dos Palos Palapas in Manzanilla for seven full days. This is a great trip down to Mexico. I don't even think it has a bid on it yet, but we're telling you, you can extend this out all the way to 2023 if you like. Yeah, I take up to 15 total people, a stunning home right there on the water. Great pool, great palapa to have a really good time. So check out lot number five in Manzanilla. If you're looking for a turkey hunt, there's not a better one than we consider the spring turkey hunt for two at the MT7 Ranch up east of Breckenridge. I can say that that ranch has done a tremendous amount of work uh, with various universities across the United States when it comes to turkey restoration, turkey habitat management. Uh, 22 plus thousand acres, you're not going to find a better spring turkey hunt out there for you and a friend. So check out lot number six at the MT7 Ranch. Lot number 11, if you want to put your brand and have your full vehicle sprayed, whether it's a truck, car, Jeep, you can do it with our friends at Performance Top Drives. Here's another great item, a full vehicle body liner spray. So check out lot number 11. They're down there in Three Rivers. It'll give you a great opportunity to get your, your vehicle sprayed. Lot number 12 is a South Texas deer capture and a tour for two. This is something we added new this year thanks to our friends at Cesar Clayburg Wildlife Research Institute. You can head down to Kingsville with them, get to visit with Dr. Dave Hewitt, who's a director of ours as well. Spend a day learning what Cesar Clayburg does, and then thanks to our friends at the East Foundation, you'll spend a day on a deer capture study that they're doing as well. So a very unique opportunity to go around and learn a lot about intensive whitetail management in South Texas. Lot number 18, our Ruger number one, 30 odd six Springfield. Now our founder, our, one of our co-founders, Larry Wysoon, as many know as Mr. Whitetail, came up with this idea this year. He partners with Ruger annually. He came up with this very unique Ruger rifle that you can pick up. It's got his autograph on it. It's got our, our 35th anniversary on it. It's a very unique single shot rifle, the Ruger number one. You're not going to find a better rifle out there to hunt all kinds of great game. So check out that lot, lot number 18 from our co-founder, Larry Wysoon. Lot number 19 as well, a trophy owdad hunt out in West Texas, Culberson County. Head out to the Apache Ranch. You're going to find over 30-inch-plus rams all across the ranch. Lodging, guides, meals, game processing, it's all included. Some of the best staff and first-class amenities that you're going to find anywhere. And while you're there as well, you can do some great trout fishing right off of camp. So if you're looking for a great trophy owdad hunt, head out to West Texas and Culberson County. Check out lot number 19. And of course, lot number 20, our big 10-day Texas desert bighorn sheep permit, thanks to our partners at Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Here's a unique opportunity for you not to only try to finish your slam or go out to harvest a great sheep 
out in West Texas, a 10-day offering with our partners at Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. 90% of the proceeds go to support sheep restoration and all the sheep efforts that they're doing out in West Texas on Elephant Mountain, Sierra Diablo, the Black Gap Wildlife Management Area. So check out lot number 20. It's a very unique item, and we highly encourage you to check it out there for the 10-day sheep hunt out in West Texas. With that, I'll throw it back to you, David. Thanks, DB. Uh, let's keep the momentum going. I, you know, every year I, I feel compelled to admonish everyone in the crowd that uh, we're not bargain shopping here. Uh, the idea is to wildly overpay. So pay no attention to the value and fair market value of what these hunts are. We want to double that, triple that, because we're, we're supporting important work here. So bear that in mind. Um, you know, an anniversary like, like the 35th especially is an opportunity for reflection. TWA has a rich history and, and it's only because of the vision of our founders and strong leadership from the very beginning that we have that history, that we've accomplished so much and that we're set to move forward into the next 35 years. When I listen to one of those true leaders is our current president, Tom Vandeveer, with a little bit of reflection on our past. Howdy folks, I hope everyone's enjoying the convention. Everyone who serves as president of this organization goes through considerable consternation when this address is looming. We all wanna come up with something that you'll enjoy and that will be meaningful. I had an easy time of it this year. I had two obvious subjects at hand. The first of these is the challenges of COVID-19. You've heard plenty about that in the media and I promise I'm not going to talk much about that. The second subject is that this is the 35th anniversary of the Texas Wildlife Association. I'd much rather talk about that. I've recently had the pleasure of spending time with some of the folks who were here in the beginning of TWA. I've gotten to hear their stories and had the opportunity to understand the level of work and commitment and sacrifice it took to create this organization. It's an amazing story of vision, dedication, and pure tenacity. Clear back in the summer of 1985, it seems that various issues were going on in the wildlife world, including a debate over the use of high fences. Our founders, Larry Wisehoon, Gary Machen, and Murphy Ray, realized that a voice was needed for wildlife and landowner rights. They met at Jim's restaurant, came up with a list of 50 potentially interested people, and set a meeting. 49 showed up, they discussed various issues that affect hunters and landowners and agreed to form an association. And that in a nutshell is how TWA came into being. The organization first operated out of Sid Lindsay's garage. I'm sure you agree we've come a very long way in our office facilities. McLean Bowman served as our first TWA president. Everyone kicked in a few dollars and lots of time. Initially, Larry Wisehoon traveled and gave talks all over the state wherever wildlife issues were on the agenda. David Langford came on as CEO a bit later and picked up where Larry left off. Charlie McTee was hired to run the office. At the five-year mark, there were around 400 members. At that point, TWA had $6,000 in the bank and $30,000 in debt. I was told that the $30,000 debt was due to a Crown Royal bill that got a little out of hand. David Langford was very careful to tell me that the Crown Royal debt was incurred before he joined TWA. The early reputation of TWA at the Capitol and among other organizations was marginal at best. Through that tenacity I described and through networking and exposure, our reputation improved and TWA was on the map. In 1991, the Texas Wildlife Association Foundation was formed to attract charitable dollars to fund our outdoor education. Our TWA magazine really began as a newsletter. The professionally prepared magazine began around 1992 and was known as the TWA News Magazine. It had a few advertisers, was 12 to 15 pages long, and was largely put together by Charlie McTee. At that point, we were up to about 1,000 members, as I said earlier, our first TWA president was McLean Bowman. Second was Richard Butler. Third was Steve Lewis, who became president at the ripe old age of 30. 
that's a very brief overview of the history of the beginnings of our organization. So let's break it down a bit. We're all familiar with what we call the three-legged stool of advocacy, conservation legacy, and hunting heritage that makes up the focus of TWA and its programs. In my discussions, I was curious as to how the early beginnings of TWA morphed into our current three areas of focus. So let's look at advocacy first. TWA was involved in advocacy from the beginning. At that time, there really was no voice for wildlife. TWA filled that niche. David Langford became our lobbyist early in the game. Evidently, he went to a three-day seminar in Austin to learn how to do that. Gib Lewis, the former Speaker of the House, joined as our second lobbyist, which gave us credibility at the Capitol. The issue of high fences was an early one for TWA, and it proved to be a unifying force. Our position was that high fences are a tool to prevent habitat degradation. One of our great early advocacy successes was in the wildlife property tax valuation. Evidently in 1991, David Langford, Steve Lewis, and Garner Fuller were sitting around talking and Garner made the comment that wouldn't it be nice if ranchers got the same tax bill for providing habitat for deer as they do for raising goats. The comment struck home and David Langford took the idea to Gibb. The bill passed the first time. It subsequently took a constitutional amendment which also passed public vote. In 1997, we took on landowner liability protection at the Capitol. That bill ultimately passed. Now we all enjoy protection from liability under the recreational use statute. That statute says that if a landowner insures against liability for at least a million dollars, a recreational user on the property cannot recover more than a million dollars. This resulted in many open gates that helped our TYHP and CL programs expand. Also in 1997, captive deer issues became a focus of attention at the Capitol. Efforts by TWA have helped keep captive deer under the jurisdiction of the Parks and Wildlife Department, have helped with forming rules to protect against the spread of chronic wasting disease, and have blocked efforts to carry out practices that would pose a threat to our wild deer herds and to human health. We continue to keep a watchful eye on these deer issues. For the last session or two, we've been deep in imminent domain reform in an effort to even the playing field for landowners. We'll be hard at that again this upcoming session. The second leg of our three-legged stool is hunting heritage. The first organized TWA youth hunt took place at the Wild Ranch around 1990. TWA and Ray Mursky provided everything from firearms to coats and sleeping bags. The Texas Youth Hunting Program evolved over time into what it is now, a youth hunting and outdoor education program that emphasizes respect for wildlife, landowners, and property. From this meager beginning, Texas Youth Hunting Program grew into a program that this past season provided 220 hunts and touched the lives of 3,400 young hunters, parents, and volunteers. Oklahoma was the first state to copy our TYHP model. Now TYHP is the gold standard youth hunting program and serves as a model for various states. The third leg of the stool is conservation legacy. Our outdoor education programs begin with a call from Burbank High School Honors English class to David Langford. The teacher wanted to take her minority students outdoors for a day. According to the teacher, and I quote, her class is studying Robert Frost and the children do not know what a flowing spring is. These children were taken to the Kerr Wildlife Management Area and then onto a private ranch. Bill Miller provided the food as he continues to do for many TWA events today. This simple beginning has led to a CL program that over the last year has touched the lives of 833,000 people. I'm sure you'll agree that this is a very impressive record. We can't talk about the history of TWA without discussing convention. TWA held conventions pretty much from the beginning. In 1989, the Wild Ranch Hotel became our chosen venue. The attendance was around 200 the first few years. Most of these were wealthy men who wanted to buy a hunt. The whole event took place in one room. Fish was cooked around the pool and wives brought sides and desserts. 
Eventually, we outgrew the YO and moved to the brand new Hyatt Hill Country Resort. This move really changed TWA forever. Instead of mostly men in attendance, it became entire families, often young families with children. You've seen what our convention has grown into since then. This year, we're all experiencing a new virtual format for our convention brought on by the circumstances we've all been dealing with. A great deal of thought and effort has gone into pivoting into this online format. I'm sure this will prove to be fun for all and successful for TWA, but I know we all hope that next year finds us back at the JW Marriott. I suspect we'll look back on this year as a pivotal point and a learning experience and that portions of this year's event will be incorporated into future conventions. The success of this year's virtual convention depends on you. That success is extremely important for the ongoing financial stability of Texas Wildlife Association. David Langford is fond of saying that in times of need, TWA members always rally to the cause. Folks, now's the time to do that. Please donate, become a sponsor, and bid on these auction items. With your help, TWA will continue to be strong through these challenging times. Part of the fun of putting together all this history was in hearing the stories. I just have time to tell one of these stories, but it's a good one. It seems that for some years, our very good member and supporter, who I'm not gonna name by name, but is known to some of y'all as El Coyote, used to donate a Longhorn steer to our convention auction. The steer was held in a pen in the parking lot at the Hyatt, uh, El Coyote was good enough to provide four cowboys to help manage the steer. Langford tells me that one night at 1 a.m. he received a call from hotel management letting him know that the steer was loose on the golf course. David went looking for the cowboys and found them in wet swimming suits by the pool next to a large pile of empty beer cans. They put on their hats and boots and each mounted a golf cart and gave chase. Now can you picture this? Cowboys, boots, hats, swimming suits, no shirts, beer, golf carts, chasing a steer on the golf course of the height in the middle of the night. They eventually succeeded in herding the steer back into the pen and a couple of elderly ladies from the Northeast were heard to say, they just don't have shows like this in New Hampshire. El Coyote was informed about this the next morning, said he knew about it, and had already renamed the steer Divot. Now you just can't make this stuff up. My thought is that we need to create a book to capture the history of TWA and the great stories like this one. I've only had time to give you a snapshot of our history. There's so much more that needs to be captured. In closing, I want you to consider what an amazing story the history of TWA is and how much good this organization has done for our outdoor world. Think of what our meager beginnings have turned into. Think of the hard work and dedication and sacrifice that went into creating and maintaining this organization. I'd like to personally thank those early leaders who got this off the ground. I'd like to thank the leaders and volunteers and staff of the organization who've led it through thick and thin these past 35 years. And most of all, I'd like to thank all our members for supporting this organization and this convention. So with that, enjoy the rest of the convention. As we always say, bid often, bid high, and above all else, thanks for all you do for the land and the water and the wildlife of this great state of ours. Thanks, Tom. I really appreciate your reflection on the past 35 years of this organization. I can't tell you what a privilege it is to work for such an impactful group of people uh, for natural resource conservation here in our state. You know, the past 35 years have set a pretty high bar, uh, and we're looking forward to the next 35 years, and there's no better launching pad or stepping stone for those next 35 years than, than this new headquarters, appropriately named the David K. Langford Center. Uh, you know, David was our, was our first uh, chief executive staff member, and, and you know, it, it's a pretty intimidating thing, but a, but a fun thing to step into those shoes and, and continue his hard work. Uh, so we're excited to share this uh, new headquarters with you guys, and we're going to do a quick tour and uh, take you around and show you some of, the, some of the stuff we're up to inside. But first, we've got to thank our, our donors and supporters. Without them, this headquarters would not be possible. 
through the TWA Foundation, we were able to raise some money to, to build a, a permanent home and really endow uh, our education programs going forward. And to learn a little bit more about that, we've got Meg Garrett. Thank you, David. The TWA Foundation was formed in 1991 as a 501 nonprofit to support TWA's conservation programs to connect Texans to the land. And since its inception, we have impacted over 4 million Texans, and that number continues to grow. And whether it's a science classroom going through discovery trunks or a child going on their very first whitetail hunt with our Texas Youth Hunting Program, we're building conservationists of tomorrow. In addition, the foundation, through its extremely generous supporters, has, has raised funds to help build us this beautiful home uh, here in New Braunfels, Texas. Why don't we go take a look inside? Thank you, Meg, and want to welcome everybody again to our first ever virtual convention here at our new TWA headquarters. Uh, you're in our boardroom, and uh, you know this is a, a state-of-the-art boardroom uh, featuring everything that we need to know. We've got our, our flat screen TV, we've got all the audio and visual that we need in here to do all kinds of great activities, and coming later this summer will be our custom-made hand mesquite uh, conference room table and chairs that'll seat up to 40 guests. So that's gonna give us a lot of room to do some great activities in here. We're gonna use it this year as our first ever war room for our convention since it's gone virtual, we're not able to be at the Marriott. But um, you know, just thinking back over the years, uh, back in the late 90s when I started with TWA, you know, we've had, this is our sixth office uh, that we've had for the association. I can go back and look at our first office where my desk was actually in the conference room itself and the conference room was about the size of one eighth of this so it's a very small conference room back then and it's amazing to grow into something so beautiful here at the new headquarters so with that we'll throw it over to our education team of Eleanor and Cassie. Thanks David. I'm Cassie Sheffer. I'm the Director of Youth Education here at TWA and I'm joined by Eleanor Dean, an Education Program Specialist with Conservation Legacy and right now we are in our flex space. Um, this is an area where our programs of Conservation Legacy and the Texas Youth Hunting Program can come in here and assemble our different programs, whether it's hunt master manuals or discovery trunks as you see here. So it's a great opportunity that we have here at our new headquarters to really expand our programs and the deployment of our programs. So I'm gonna turn it over to Eleanor now and to tell you about the discovery trunk program. Yeah, so as you can see here, we have 144 discovery trunks. Most of them are housed here at the moment during the summer, but during the regular school year, these trunks are in school. So only about a quarter of what you see here is gonna be here at a time. And we ship them to schools all across Texas completely for free, and we have seven different trunk topics. As you can see, there are a couple of our most popular trunk materials here on the table, and they're full of hands-on materials for the students, different lessons, all kinds of goodies for them to enjoy. So again, that's our Discovery Trunk program deployed here from headquarters. We also have our own media room as well now. And so not only do we deploy programs from here, we have educators that visit the classroom all across the state, but then another great opportunity here at headquarters is the ability to actually take education here outside on our own campus. And so with that, we'll turn it over to Ileana. Thank you, Cassie. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to share with you uh, TWA's plans for its outdoor campus. Like any other office or new building, we have the opportunity to ensure that our landscaping is both water wise and also helpful or supportive of pollinators and other insects. Uh, we'll be using native trees, plants, uh, shrubs in our landscaping. Beyond that, we will be working to restore four and a half acres of Blackland Prairie. We're so excited to be able to implement the land stewardship strategies that we often encourage in our education and outreach programs. We're also very excited to be able to grow wildlife habitat so close to New Braunfels. Um, very soon, hopefully, we'll be able to invite volunteers to come out and help us with this work. So please be on the lookout for opportunities on our website. And thank you so much for being part of Wildlife 2020. Enjoy the rest of the program. Thanks, Ileana. Uh, so that's a quick glimpse, you know, a sneak peek, if you will, of some spots around our new headquarters. We cannot wait uh, to start hosting workshops and, and uh, events here in person. In the meantime, if you get a few minutes, come by and see us outside of New Braunfels. Uh, we've got extra masks at the front door, so uh, come by and, and catch a quick tour on a normal work hour. You know, we couldn't be more thankful of the support of, of all the donors and the uh, volunteers that help raise the money and, and design and build this new facility. Uh, but you know, more importantly, or more uh, 
uh, more immediately, uh, we're really grateful for all the people that are participating in our auction, which is going right now. It is smoking. Uh, if you are wanting to uh, get something bought, you need to pay attention because it's uh, the ticker is rolling. So for a quick update, we're going to go back over to David Bremger. Thank you, David. As you look at the uh, auction items going, you've got uh, probably, what, 50 minutes left? 8 o'clock is when the, when the clock stops and the auction stops, and we'll see who wins some of these unique auction hunts, trips, activities, programs, a lot of the products that you, uh, that you see ar around the office. But um, let's take a look at a few of the items that still are out there that we'd like for you to learn a little bit about. Lot 15 is a one-day mulching with the Barco 937 from our friends right down toward Houston. Here's an opportunity for you to get some great land clearing done. Take the Barco, do some mulching, um, a really unique opportunity for you to get out and mobilize and do some work on your ranch and do some available land clearing for you. Our next lot for you to look at is lot number 16. Um, this hunt, due to COVID, has moved to 2023, but here's an opportunity for you to head to New Zealand, a great red stag hunt over with our friends at South Pacific Safari. He's been with us for over 12 years, a great opportunity for you to spend $3,000 worth of credit to hunt a red stag up to 360, up to three days for one hunter. Check that out at lot number 16. Our next lot for you to look at is lot number 38. That's a two-day alligator hunt in Florida for two. That's lot 36, I'm sorry, but here's a great opportunity for you to head over to Florida with our TWA director, Justin Field, over there. Two hunters, two trophy alligators. You're going to have a great time, and that includes uh, airfare for you as well, a voucher to get you over there through Southwest Airlines, thanks to our friends Brad and Katie Canale. So look at that uh, two-day alligator hunt, lot number 36. Lot number 40, if you haven't had an opportunity to harvest the Texas lamb, this may be the year for you to do it. Start with the trophy mule deer out in the Trans-Pecos. Head out with Wildlife Systems and TWA Past President Greg Simons on this hunt. All meals, lodging, guides included. You're going to have a great time right there on the historic A.S. Gage Ranch in Marathon. So check that out if you have an opportunity to do so. You through okay as well. Lot number 40 for a trophy mule deer hunt. Lot number 44, our friends at the famed W.T. Wagner Ranch, the largest ranch under one fence in the history. Uh, the W.T. Wagner sits right south of Vernon, so here's an opportunity for two people to go to the W.T. Wagner, harvest two great management whitetails. You can add on some hogs and other unique opportunities while you're there. But check out lot number 44 for an opportunity to go out this hunting season and harvest two great whitetails and see some country you would never have seen ever before, lot number 44. Also, lot number 45, well, as we talked earlier, I think Niall mentioned it. Um, he's in love with it, we know. The 2020 exclusive sports coat that I have on right now, I'm telling you, this is something that, that Larry Weissman, one of our co-founders, came up with a few years ago, and uh, we're entering our fourth year of this. A unique opportunity for you to take this coat home. I mean, who wouldn't want it, I guess? But lot number 45, the exclusive sports coat of me, you can have it. Like check out lot number 45. Again, help support our mission. If you get the opportunity, go to our convention website, wildlife2020.com. There's an orange button there that says support us now. If you didn't have an opportunity to uh, win on any bids, but you would like to still continue to support the mission of us serving Texas lands and Texas wildlife and our land stewards here in Texas, check out wildlife2020.com. Click on that button and help support us with that. With that, David, I'll throw it back over to you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and somebody please buy that jacket. I don't want to have to see it here again. Uh, so keep that one running. You know, our, our auction at last check was just over $320,000. Help us get to three fifty. dollars We need to really knock this out of the park. Uh, there's great momentum you've got till 8 o'clock. So uh, watch those bids. And if you haven't already registered, uh, we've got quite a few people that have been. So you need to, you need to get logged in and, and get bidding now. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed our, our first and hopefully last uh, live broadcast for convention. Uh, but, you know, we've had a lot of fun with it. And, and none of this would be possible without the Herculean efforts and just remarkable teamwork on behalf of the staff at TWA. And that's, that's not just me and David Bremiger. Uh, that, that's everybody else, you know, on behalf of our 32 staff members statewide and about 19 here uh, at the headquarters. We've got some of them here with us tonight to help us uh, run this convention, and uh, we wanna, want them to all have a chance to say hi.
There they are, the magnificent team right there, the ladies of TWA helping us uh, keep this convention up and running. Uh, thank you all so much for your help. Couldn't be more proud uh, to be a part of a team with you all. Everybody out there uh, across the state, we miss you all. We look forward to seeing you in person. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us this evening. Keep bidding, stay safe, and thank you for your support of TWA. And good night.